Imagine I had a big bucket. In the bucket contains 90 balls, 30 of which are red and 60 of which are either black or yellow. Now I told you that if you chose a red ball, you would get $100. But I could also say, or you could pick to choose a yellow ball, and if you get a yellow ball, then you get $100. Which would you choose? The chances are you would choose the red ball. Why? Because this is something called the ambiguity effect. It's a bias in decision making where people tend to select options for which the probability of a favorable outcome is known over a probability of a favorable outcome that is unknown. So the probability of choosing a red ball we know is one out of three because there's exactly 30 balls. Now the probability of choosing a yellow ball is also one out of three, but there's an unknown factor in there because we're just talking about probability. So there could be zero balls or there could be 60 yellow balls. If there's 60, well then that's great. If there's zero, well that's not so great. So there's a little risk factor involved. Most people are risk adverse, meaning that they would go with the option to choose the red ball. This was an experiment done by Daniel Ellsberg in 1961, and he showed just this, that most people will choose the favorable option that's known over the option that's unknown. Now, how does this play today? Well, in financial investments, for example, a lot of people will look at the stock market and they'll see that the stock market returns over the course of history have been incredibly good, uh, much better than say like government bonds or CDs. But people still buy government bonds and CDs. Why? Because they know the return on that for sure. If the return says, let's say 3%, then you know you're getting 3%. With the stock market, it could be 3%, it could be 10%, 20%, 50%, 50 or it could be negative 50%. You don't know. There's a big unknown factor. And this is an example of the ambiguity effect in action.